Hi everyone, Glenn here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to hopefully tonight finally get some images of the green comet that everybody else has been imaging and talking about. I need to join the party. I'm going to be using my new CEM26 mount. I'm going to use my trusty Z61 and my 2600mm Pro camera. I'm looking to shoot RGB. So I'm going to get this set up in the garden ready for tonight. So hopefully you'll join me. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astro Bloke. I'm going to be doing a video on the Chem 26. I really like it. Um, I think, uh, in hindsight, I wish I'd gone for the sturdier tripod. I think if anything lets this down, it is the tripod. It's okay, it does hold it, um, and it does keep it nice and light. I can use it all in one, like pick it all up as one unit. Um, but a sturdier tripod might improve things a little bit. I do find polar alignment a bit awkward now. The I don't uh, particularly like the locking mechanism on the uh, declination and on the RA. Um, you, you get yourself polar aligned and then when you try and tighten them up, it moves it. Um, when I first uh, used it, the guiding was not particularly brilliant. It was around sort of between 0.9 and 1.2 and I was thinking, oh no, this is not good at all. And HEQ5, I know I can get better guiding out of it. Um, but since then, I've got it back down. I've got it down to about 0.6. Um, I think it'll be better than that. And once I've learned everything about the mount and got everything uh, working as it should, I think I'll be able to sort it out. I've done pet training with it uh, through the handset, and that's been quite good. Um, didn't make any major differences to the numbers, but um, something I definitely want to go into a bit deeper. Um, and I want to talk about a few things. I don't like the fact that I'm plugged into the handset. You have to plug through the handset. You can't plug into the mount uh, to control it, um, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but it has got Wi-Fi, so I'm going to look at connecting via the Wi-Fi and maybe controlling it through that. Because at the moment, I'm using it all through my Mealy PC up here um, and the Pegasus Powerbox Advanced. So I'm able to control it remotely. Um, but I don't like all these extra wires hanging down and this hanging down. I'd rather get rid of all this. I think I think I can. I just need to look into it. As I say, I've only had the mount a little while. I've only had it out a few times. And I've been so busy with all my other projects that this is something I need to get 
to so I will definitely do that and do a nice bit of coverage on it because it's a really nice mount and um, one of the really surprising things with this mount is how quiet it is I mean I know some people worry about using uh, equatorial mounts in their backyard because of the whine of the motors and I know some uh, Skywatcher mounts can be quite noisy I've got an AZ GTI and that thing sounds like a coffee grinder when it's um, <laughs> slewing this thing is near silent so really nice really nice piece of kit right I'm just going to make sure everything's plugged in and then um, we're ready to try and capture some comet pictures later tonight okay so really going well um, I had a few problems with Stellarium and uh, used to uh, I haven't used it for quite a long time what used to happen was there's a link in Nina and you can actually click import the coordinates that you've got set on your Stellarium and it'll come into Nina and frame up the target. I tried to do that with this uh, Comet, but um, for some reason it wasn't working. Um, I could have spent a long time battling with it, but I thought, do you know what? Just going to leave it. I uh, just made a note of the coordinates, punched them in manually on the framing tab. It's given me that. Um, I worked out I was looking at it for a while, could see the direction it was moving in, so I've put it slightly to the left of the frame, and um, and it's going rather well. It's uh, tracking it nicely. I was getting photobombed by Elon, Elon Musk at the uh, beginning of the session with a few satellites flying through everything, but um, no, nope, the subs are looking quite nice. It'll be their 90-second subs. I'm taking RGB, so I'm going to stack them. I've been looking at some um, different techniques uh, for stacking um, and I saw a really good uh, video actually by Alaskan Astro and um, I really liked his image and I liked the process he was going through. He used PixInsight and I think I'm going to follow his process. I'll put a link in my description to his video so you might want to check it out. So I'm really excited that I'm actually finally getting this target. Um, I miss Neowise, um, terrible really, I just at the time I was busy with other things and I wasn't sure how to take a comet picture, this is the first one I've ever taken so I mean you know, it's good that I'm actually getting on it before it uh, disappears for another 50,000 years, to think the last time it came by was the Stone Age, it's uh, quite mind blowing but uh, anyway I'm going to get these subs rolling and then uh, we'll have a look at the process for uh, editing it and getting a final picture. And hopefully I'll get a nice one. So I'm using my mono camera, so I'm taking 90 seconds of RGB and um, I'm really hoping it's gonna come out okay. Right, let's get back to it.